Hey guys, we want to say thank you to our sponsor, Cut Shield, for bringing you this episode. Make sure you check them out on the link below and use the promo code for 25% off your order. Used by all 32 NHL teams and players, Cut Shield is the premier protective player clothing designed by players for players. Their innovative cut resistant clothing has prevented serious injury to numerous players, including over 30. NHL players. Cut Shield gives you the peace of mind to go out and play without worrying about injury. Use our promo code Grove City Hockey, all lowercase and no space, for an additional 25% off your order today. That was a beautiful passing play right there, Sean. What a save! Welcome to another exciting edition to Grove City Hockey Presents. Hockey in our neck of the woods, and you, sir, were a very talked about person towards the end. I'm a fifth year senior, kind of. Well, it's my sixth year of college. Incredible. Welcome to GCH Podcast. I'm your host, Ben W. Stock, and with me is a very special guest. I've got the owner of Blade Shark Sports, Maca- Michael Michael Johnson. How you doing, brother? I'm good. How are you, Ben? Oh, living the dream. You know, I always find a way to butcher names. No matter how many times we go over it before we even start talking, <laughs> I always find a way to just butcher it. So I apologize. That's okay, brother. You know, my parents... <laughs> My parents were uh, having me in the late 60s, so uh, who knows what they were thinking. They were probably (laughs) tripped out on something, so we're going to not worry about it, but good to see you again. Yeah, it's great to see you. So we met back in, I want to say it's 2009, 2010, somewhere right in there, when you were first starting out with with your business. And now, so tell us a little bit about Blade Shark what it is, um, and then we'll go from there. Yeah, so um, I played inline hockey when I was in my late 20s. Uh, Probably I was 28, 29 years old and um, ventured over into ice hockey six months, maybe a year after. And I never understood the whole taping, the wax, the tape. Uh, wax. I mean, and quite frankly, all of this came about. I mean, how I even invented Blade Shark was just, I got frustrated. One night I was trying to leave the ice and I was fighting with the gate to get out of the, get out of the, off the rink. And I put my stick up under my jersey and all the goo and, and stuff just stuck to my jersey. And I was like, now I've just ruined my jersey with this stick and stick and wax or tape and wax, which I don't even understand what I'm doing. But again, I'd come from inline where you didn't need all that. Right. And I just thought there's got to be a better way. So um, I kind of, I've always been somebody that tinkered. I come from an engineering background with my parents. And so I have always been somebody that tinkered, thought outside the box and started kind of going down the path of maybe making my own stick that had the particles embedded in it. It was always going to be way too heavy. It was going to make sense for the way the game was going with, lighter sticks. And so I, I was, um, I came across this material that just made perfect sense. 
Uh, it, it basically was a medium grit sandpaper film, not necessarily a paper, but a film that had some some give to it so that it could take the contour of a hockey stick. And I just started testing it out, having them cut in the shape of the blade so that if I sold them, it could hit 99% of the blades pretty accurately. Yeah. Um, and I thought I was going to change the world. I thought I had invented, I had invented the, uh, <laughs> the little uh, drink umbrellas. You know, I thought <laughs> this is going to be perfect. I'm going to change the world. Right. Um, Got the and, next big product here. Yeah, yeah. And while it was, you know, it was a smart idea, hockey's a very tradition-rich sport, and people are very um, set in their ways, and they, they like the ritual of sitting in the locker room. And I get all of that. The reality is this was essentially the square grooves of golf. To me, it made total sense. In tight spaces, I was able to grab the puck, lift it, if I had to reach out for something that was 10, 12 feet away, I could stick my stick out and mm -hmm. not, and knock the energy off the puck. So it would stay near me so that I could catch it and get it back in play. Uh, play I, I played both offense and defense when I transitioned into ice hockey. And to me, it just made sense. Um, did some ads and the hockey news and USA hockey and all, and just got bludgeoned. I mean, I had a few orders, but certainly not enough to make it. And, as I evolved, I I thought, well, you know, maybe colors would help with the kids. So I started kind of dumbing down my audience to go toward kids versus, okay, this is going to be in the NHL and right. high-level elite. Uh, certainly had a little traction within line, as you know, and really just had to evolve and make a business around the product. The product made sense, but it wasn't for everyone. And once I at least acknowledged that, I was able to have people say, well, can you put our logo on it? I mean, I could already print colors. So I was like, well, it's all printed. So why, why can't I do your logo? Right. Um, I, I met a dear friend that, that later gave me the rap business. She had a rap business okay. that was, it, it, it was going to work, but I don't think it was going to work in the way she did it. She had an amazing cannoli family business up in Boston. Area, and uh, she didn't need what she was trying to do with the sports business. And she basically said, Michael, I love you. Have it. Take it. Do what you want. Um, and I sort of revamped how we did it because I already had partnerships with teams on the Blade Shark front. Mm -hmm. We started taking logos and we've made a lot of changes. I mean, I've been doing this for 19 years now. We've made a lot of iterations as to how we produce the tape, how we print the tape, cut the tape, yep. uh, as well as the stick wraps, which not everybody wants a stick wrap, but they are cool. Let's say, you know, let's say these sticks are $350 this year, but last year's stick is a hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. The technology, is it really that much different? I mean, is it 10%? Is it 2%? It may be nothing. It may be the same stick branded differently. So we, we started making these stick wraps. We do them in team logos. We have some unique patterns and styles and such. But for the most part, we're looking at it can be your team. It can be personalized with your name and number on it. It's not intended to last forever. If we can get a season out of it uh, or, or half a season, let's say we sell you two wraps, get you through this full season. Mm -hmm. But it's cool. Your stick didn't change just because you played six months on it. Do you right. really now need a brand new $350 stick? Some families might say yes, but most families are just trying to stay in the travel league. So they don't want to spend that money if they don't have to, if the stick still works. So right. we've now got the tape on the bottom. We've got the wrap mm -hmm. uh, on the shaft and, and we've just sort of built a business around it. We, we do a lot of partnerships, fundraising partnerships with youth organizations around the country. Uh, we're pretty much in every state in the country where we give back 15% of our proceeds to that organization for them to partner with us. I mean, nobody's giving them decals. Nobody's giving them stick wraps. Nobody's giving them hockey tape. We have some other partnerships with Howie's as well as uh, Lizard Skins. And we're trying to build a very grassroots approach to offer these people things that their people, that their players as well as their parents want 
that they can't necessarily get with everyone in town. We don't do apparel because that's pretty territorial. It's just not a battle that's worth it for us. We stay in our lane. We have relationship with hundreds of teams and we, we just try to be really good at what we do. We're certainly unique. It's not for everyone. We recognize that, but we give back to the game. We're interested in the growth. We do a lot of tournaments. Uh, we share revenue with tournaments if they have us come out. So I travel a lot. We have teams uh, that also do sales for us in Buffalo, Las Vegas, uh, certainly Minnesota, as you saw me at the state show. So we're, yep. we're growing. We're building this grassroots approach to a business that makes some sense. Again, not for everyone, but we love what we do. We love our products. The people seem to really like our products. We're still growing. Who knows where we'll end up? But right. uh, again, been here 19 years and don't see any reason why we can't go another 19 or 30 more. For right. sure. I, I, definitely, I definitely see what we're doing as a 100-year business because it's things people want. We can evolve. The game will always evolve. So that's my story. Yeah. No, it, it's, it's really cool because you're – blade uh your blade tape is what caught my eye yeah. uh, i was using i believe it was an easton style rubber um blade tape just like what you have uh but it was with rubber um yeah yeah and then easton went out of business with that particular style for whatever reason i didn't sure. play ice hockey you know growing up i was just strictly in line um so i again like you didn't really get the grasp the concept of wrapping up the the stick with the tape all the time i go there's got to be a better way to not only keep my stick light but get the the um functionality that the tape is doing with the with the puck that we're using for inline sure and uh so that's what i started setting out doing was looking for that type of product uh which then led me to your your business and uh you know and, and it's been hands down one of the for me you know again you know like you said very traditional uh <laughs> i can just slap it on i can get you know like you said half a season out of a out of a blade tape um you know and then once i started seeing the blade wrap or the stick wraps the shaft wraps uh yeah. i was like man that's really cool too you know because then now, not only can I change it, I can go, now I can do a cancer type stick. And my stick is still the same stick that I bought, you know, at the beginning right. of the season. Um, you know, I'll buy, you know, five or six, and then I'll have two set up for specific, you know, um, events throughout the year, uh, wrap it up. And it was just, it worked out really well. Because then not only that, but then you can customize it, you know. <laughs> as well yeah, yeah. So. so it's it's been a fun journey um for sure and and you know we were certainly one of the first with the hockey tape alternatives to really get beyond the tacky mac um which is a very inexpensive rubber i mean made a lot of sense but yeah uh, again i think they recognized hey this is hockey people aren't just gonna change overnight yep. but as we started more of these tape alternatives have come online i mean there's blade tape which is a rubber based yep. we're seeing paper based um good product we're friends with them no issues there you've got the new um butt ends mm -hmm. uh, butt ends pitbull i believe is what it's called as well as yeah. res tape. so people are like well you know which one's better hey it's it's always going to be personal preference however these people have these people coming online have validated what we've been trying to do since 2004 right. and new isn't always better but new is still new mm -hmm. um we have a a customized program that is unmatched we can actually print and cut any quantity we want in a matter of days two three right. days nobody else can do that so yeah. we're, we're pretty unique and that was a that was a challenge that I really fought hard to win, so yeah. that we could be, um, we could compete. I mean, again, we're very grassroots. We don't try to blow your doors off by marketing at pure hockey and 
Piranis and places like that. We're going to be in the rink. We're going to be talking about what the product is. We're going to have a website that compels you to say, let me look a little further. And we also try to be very available via phone, text, chat to say, if you have a question, just hit us up. We're old school. Yeah. We're, we're here. We're here ready to talk to you. We're not going to hide behind a recording or, or just some message that doesn't answer your question. We are touchy feely and Hopefully that works in our favor. I think it does. Um, again, it's a pretty old school approach, but I'm old at this time, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I know. When when I first reached out to you back uh, in 2009, uh, yeah, it was 2009 or 2010, uh, I, was, I think I was still in between the Thunder and the, and the Giraffes at that point. Yeah, and I, I was sure. like, I just yeah. sent you a logo, and I'm like, what can you do with this? And you were just like, and, and it was pretty quick. You were just like, this is what I can do. And yeah. you sent me a, a, a stick wrap look and, and the actual uh, blade tape. Cause I think that's what I told you. I was really more yeah. focused on. And, uh, and then w again, when I went to Africa, same thing, I was like, Hey man, check this out. Like this, check out this logo. And you were like, look at this. And then it was like, with, <laughs> it was quick. Like it was a quick, like, I, I don't, I don't want to say it was within hours, but it felt like it was within hours. You know, well, after we had had our conversation, it was pretty quick. You know, at, at this point, I've certainly b built some efficiency into what and how I do things. And yep. people people that reach out when they send an email, it's a little different with a phone call or a text. But the, with email, they expect that it may take a minute. And mm -hmm. I try to respond really quickly. For one, my life is tournaments. I work a lot of tournaments. Yep. I travel the country for those. Um, I have teams that travel for those. But for the most part, Monday through Thursday, I'm kind of sitting around watching golf. I don't have a terrible life, so I, uh, I'm able yeah. to I'm able to give it the time and get back to people so that they feel, hey, this is important. Look at that! Wow, I, I just sent him an email, and poof, I've gotten a, a mock up back again. I've I've learned through the almost 20 years now that I to take more control in what I can do as part of the process. I've become a graphic artist. I've uh, become a logistics master, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, a, a web, and I'm learning the social media. I, it looks like I'm terrible at it <laughs> based, <laughs> based on the returns, but you know, that's something I can always get better. I've, I've made a few videos here lately on and trying to place them out there. And it's fun. I don't, they may be terrible, but for me, I like a little, uh, techno electronic yeah. <laughs> beat so I, I tend to gravitate toward music that's a little more upbeat and and that okay. may not be my audience versus a you know a real thrasher rock but right. i have fun with it i don't i don't take myself too seriously <laughs> no uh, and, and in this sport you can't because like you said we're the hockey uh community is very traditionally based um you know and for those people that haven't had a chance to check out uh, Michael's product, Blade Shark, you got to check it out. Um, it's by far, I mean, one of the best products I think on the market. Um, you know, it's really one of those products that if you haven't grown up in that ice environment, give it a shot because right. what, what's it going to do? It's not going it, to, it's either going to help your game or right. your game isn't going to change. It's not going to hurt your game. Well, I mean, when I was playing, I, I didn't, I, I didn't even start playing hockey until I was almost thirty years old. Yeah. So, and now I'm fifty-two. So, I mean, it's, um, I didn't grow up with the traditions. I grew up in the square grooves and balada ball, and now it's all synthetic. So, to me, it was like you're just supposed to change. Hockey isn't necessarily that way, but, um, you know, we've tried to create a good product, and uh, again, we. We've been here long enough and survived that um, we know how to morph. Uh, but we hope people will come and check it out. And I appreciate the podcast and get the word yeah, out for us. For We've sure. Now you a long time. Yeah. <laughs> now you also um, also don't just stick with hockey. You also brand into uh, what what most people might not even realize. But you also do trust fund hockey, which is uh, lacrosse, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You threw me for a loop. I almost, yeah. had to, I almost had to look something up, Ben. You're like, wait, what? What, what was that? Yeah, that was we a. It, we call it grass hockey. Yeah. Oh well, 
but it was a Jeopardy question not too long ago. And uh, so, yeah. and I, even I went, what? Trust fund That's hockey. Awesome. What? That's awesome. And then, and then, and nobody got it. No, none of the contestants got it. So, sure. sure. <laughs> but yeah. yeah uh, so so we, tell us a little bit about lacrosse uh, and, and what you can do for the lacrosse sticks. Um, yeah. And, and um, so on. Our lacrosse side of the business is smaller. Um, but a lot of our kids that play hockey, uh, especially in the Northeast and the Midwest, they, their off season is basically lacrosse. Cause as I said, we refer to it as hockey on grass. Mm -hmm. So we actually make stick wraps for those lacrosse sticks. Our lacrosse portfolio is not as extensive as it is in hockey. Um, but we do hit the areas where it, where the sport is popular and we have a nice online portfolio with some unique designs that are branded of our own designs, but we do a lot of team business. We do that for universities, um, small colleges, as well as high schools and tons of youth programs. Again, we do the fundraising program there as well. So we're pretty sticky because we do so many things with, car decals, magnets, helmet decals, helmet wraps. We really push our goalie helmet wraps back, switching over to hockey. Yeah. We've really, we've really um, sort of perfect, perfected our craft on the, on the hockey goalie helmets. And that's been a nice little shot in the arm as well, because we've got, we've already got the logos and stuff. We're already in the business. It's just yep. a different format. And so you'll probably see a lot of our helmet designs, here in the next little bit um, yeah. as we grow that side of our business as well. And we're just trying to stay sticky in the sport. We love it. it it's fun. But you can't be, you can't just pigeonhole yourself and do, Oh, I'm a hockey tape guy or oh, I'm a right. stick or, or even a grips guy. You know, you got to evolve and have other products that people want. And uh, for the most part, we get a lot of areas of a person's stick, whether it's the, the, the grip or the, <laughs> or the tape or uh, the same goes for lacrosse, but thank you for asking about the lacrosse. Yeah. Yeah, no. Cause well, I mean, you do, you're, we're, we're talking, we're talking about your business. Uh, it's not just hockey. You also have other avenues as well that you can expand into. Um, it's just one of those ones where, you know, not everybody just plays straight hockey though, either. You know, yeah. there are others that are playing the baseball, they're playing the softball, um, you know, they're playing soccer, they're playing, you know, all of the other sports that you can think of football, you know, baseball, you know, basketball, all of that stuff. Um, it's, which is something that I like to see, especially at the youth level. Um, you know, because nowadays you're starting to see kids that are just so one dimensional and that's all they want to do is just one sport for the right. 365 days a year, 360, you know, six days that, you know, depending on the leap year. <laughs> Take a break. Um, Go shoot a basketball. <laughs> I know, right? And uh, it's just one of those ones where you just want to, you know, um, you know, you just want to see those kids expand because the hand-eye coordination from each and every other sport yeah. uh, will actually help you. In, well, in your right. It'll it'll broaden that spectrum of of uh, hand-eye versus so specific. The puck's always going to be here. You yeah. know, the basket's always going to be there. Yeah, I think. I think the more you can hone in just all of those skills and, and be able to adapt and react. I think the mental part of the reaction when you mm -hmm. get into other sports, uh, I, I know with me personally, having played a lot of sports growing up yep. that I wasn't great at any of them, but I was above average at all of them because mm -hmm. some of, a lot of those skills transferred. So, yeah, but yeah, man, Art sports great. <laughs> it, it, it really is, you know. Like it doesn't matter what it is. Like I remember growing up, like when my, I think I was Luke's age. My grandparents bought me this basketball set, and I was, I would be across the room, and I would just be just draining yeah. threes, yeah. Yeah. you know. Even though I don't even think the three point line was invented at that time, but you know, it was pretty cool. Uh, just chucking the ball up and it would they just thought i was going to be some kind of prodigy with with basketball sure. and then uh and then i uh i was only like 120 pounds or something like that but i was tall though i was like five foot eight you know by the time i was in eighth grade yeah. um but 
now it was just one of those ones where it's just like, no, I think I'm going to go do this instead. So, <laughs> but yeah, so, well, that's going to wrap it up for this episode okay. of the GCH podcast. I want to thank Michael Johnson for, with Blade Shark, uh, you know, for taking the time to, to come on and talk to us about, uh, your product and you're going to send me over some graphics so I can put them up on the, on the episode so everybody can see. Will and, do. uh, We'll, uh, you know, get the word out so everybody can at least check it out. You know, it may not be your cup of tea, but if the, at somebody out there is going to want to try it because yeah. I think it's, you know, it's one of those products that you have to try in order to see if it's going to work for you. For me, it worked. It, it helped my game out uh, immensely. Um, so, you know, it might do the same for you guys. All right. Okay. Cool. Ben, thank you for the time tonight. I appreciate it. Okay. I'll send you that stuff. All right. Sounds good. We'll uh, see you guys on the flip side, all right? All right. Thanks, Michael. Take care. Cheers. Cheers.